Hey everyone, welcome back with your boy Beano Mac. Now this week we're gonna do another Just Bring a video, of course, as you can see. This time we're gonna un yeah, this time we're gonna unlock the Man Beast Rhino. Now this one's probably one of my favorite ones. Now we're gonna go through the basics, obviously, as you know. I'm just gonna say it right now. Do not form a tag team. That's how the majority of these storylines go. Now, if you want to know the rest of the ones right away, you know, you just want to find the path, that's in the description for you. But here we go as Keen, and we're going to go for the hardcore title in this storyline. Now, as you know, he still start out always on the same path. For some reason, I got the same exact guys as it was in uh, the Rock storyline. Rikishi starts out as the guy that calls you out, then... Billy Gunn, the one Billy Gunn, I should say, is the one who comes out after. I, I Once again, I hate how they... Nobody has ever said, The Rock, you can't hide backstage all night. Then again, maybe with, a, <laughs> maybe with Rikishi, that doesn't seem too out of the realm of possibility. He wasn't exactly the best on the mic. The Rock. It is kind of sad though, because I mean, Rikishi wasn't really a bad, and he was really popular and too cool in 2000. So you kind of understand why he got to that point where they were trying to push him, but I think really, even worse so than his mic skills, he just kind of did it all wrong. And here comes Kane, because he's not going to take that line down. Like, I feel like if they focus more on the bonsai drop aspect of him rather than the stink face him not getting completely <laughs> obliterated <laughs> by stone cold and literally almost killed if you have, don't know what I'm talking about stone cold literally almost drove a car into Rikishi before he was stopped by the cops and I mean Rikishi did nothing in that match so I mean it really did no favors for Rikishi he wasn't going to do anything and I get that's the thing stone cold was the man of the attitude era but, I mean, in a way, that kind of ruined his career, too. Um, a lot of people point to WrestleMania 17, but Stone Cold and his rivalry coming back with Rikishi and Rikishi being the guy who ran over Stone Cold, it just it did nobody favors. Rikishi never came across as that guy, and you couldn't believe him as that guy. I mean, before that, he was just a dancing goofball and too cool. So, I think it should have been uh, maybe Chris Jericho. I think it would fit his character so well, but they wanted him to be a face, and it's probably something stupid with Vince. You know, thinking he's too small at the time or something. So obviously you show up on stage as you seen, then you tell him, I want to kick his butt all over the arena, his fat, ugly butt. Man, to be one of those guys, <laughs> to be one of those guys that had to take the Rikishi's stink face, that's so terrible. Uh, last uh, last episode, I talked about the Tajiri spraying the poison mist in Jonathan Coachman's face, and that was a great clip. My recommendation for this week: you need to check out when Vince gets the stink face, because at first I believe it's Tori Wilson that uh, is about to give it to him, because that was like her thing. Obviously, the overly sexualization of the divas at the time, and. Uh, I don't remember it much, but I think she used to just use that on other girls, and obviously the joke was, you know, the guys would always want it, because theoretically it's not even a stink face, but yeah, with this one, um, you're going to want to go to the parking lot, talk to Vince, kind of the same setup as the McFoley story, just, you know, go get the match set up, and this, like the dialogue in this game is just so... I don't even know what, like, it's it's like Resi it's if you took the voice acting from the original Resident Evil game and just wrote it down. Alright, I want to deal with Rikishi now. Makes sense. I'm very busy right now. <laughs> I don't have time to deal with your problems. Okay, so get ready for the match then. So. <laughs> like, what is... Tonight you will face Rikishi. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what I asked for. Like, I don't... Who wrote the dialogue in this game? So we're just getting right into the match here. 
Kane's definitely always been my favorite wrestler and this is my favorite look, so I had to scoop him up. Especially, I think, uh, the road to WrestleMania, he went as, uh, that was when he was like the hardcore champion against, no, I think that's when he won the hardcore championship, actually, correction, against um, Raven and Big Show in a triple threat match, WrestleMania 17, that was a wild match. It's interesting to think that, you know, two big stars and the Big Show and Kane just kind of got, you would think, almost relegated to that kind of match, but it was a good time. It sounds like I was, like, on a date or something there, but... <laughs> but that that is a really good, great match. One of the best of the hardcore division. You should always check it out. Apparently, Raven, he's uh, in, like, a, I think... I forget if it's a forklift. He's in some sort of car, like a golf cart or something like that. And he almost runs over, like, the, uh, the power cables that powers the entirety of, like, the feed, the video, the whites to the entire arena. And he almost ran over it and unplugged the whole thing. <laughs> Ruining one of the biggest WrestleManias of all time if he actually did. So that's just a fun fact there if you didn't know. Man, the, the AI just... This is normal difficulty. And the AI are just... They go crazy in this game. As you can see. I feel like if you can outlast them eventually when they are ready to be defeated... They usually don't reverse as much, if that makes sense. But it's it's not like unfair, really, or unfun. It's just something that, you know, they're very aggressive with reversals in this game. Making it kind of one of the more tougher uh, games, I would say. Kane's choke slam from hell. Always a classic. And that's, uh, I always hate when, like, I get in the corner. Not to just <laughs> walk around them so I don't get the rope break. And that's it. Like, listen to this dial. Well, not listen, look at it too. Keep up the good work. <laughs> like, it's just so goofy. Who thought of this stuff? <laughs> I can't imagine Kane saying any of this stuff. And Rikishi looking dejected on the stage. Poor guy. Yeah, sorry for the crowd noise. It was a lot louder than I thought. Then, once again, like I said, the one Billy Gunn, like... Yeah, I can't... It is hard to believe. You're not going to go for the world title ever. In 99, that was probably his best chance of ever being, like, a singles card guy. And, uh... I don't know, a lot of people say that they didn't like it because he was shoved down their throats. That him and, like, <laughs> Hardcore Highway being the big shot. But I feel like the issue was, I mean, The Rock, they even said he didn't want to deal with him. And then, you know, he just never had a good feud. I mean, it was just all about his ass. How was anybody supposed to take this guy seriously when the feud revolves around him getting poison ivy on his ass? <laughs> And uh, as you just seen, obviously, you know, I keep glossing over the points as they come. When he calls you out, you want to stay backstage on this one. Only ever come out when you're going for the world title, essentially. Then once again, William Regal is waiting for you. Now, this is the point where you can get to the Insurrection Arena as well. This is when you go to his office. He'll ask you if you want the Intercontinental title. You have the option to pick the European title as well, and that's when you go for that. But I will also cover that in a separate video at some point too. So for this, you want to go straight to Earl Hebner. And you're going to ask him for a shot at the hardcore title. It, it'll just take, you know, like 30 seconds to get to that point, unfortunately. Like, I get it. Hey, Earl Hebner, you know. What, like, what do we... <laughs> What are we waiting for at this point? So, go for the hardcore title, and then you get this cutscene where you'll chase after the current hardcore champion, the man beast himself, Rhino. I gotta say, um, usually with the hardcore title, it's always tough. I imagine it had to be really tough at certain, excuse me, at certain points to uh, figure out who the champion should have been. But I mean. 
Rhino was like the perfect makes sense for this kind of deal. Not only is that for like, you know, an unlockable, but it makes sense because I remember him being a big part of the hardcore division and kind of being, you know, alongside Raven, one of the bigger deals. And I always see this clip on now, um, YouTube on where it's Crash doing a promo backstage. I think somebody asked him about Rhino. He says, Rhino's not even an issue. And then like immediately, you know, <laughs> Rhino just gives him the gore into like a like a shed door or something like that. So yeah, all you have to do now is just beat Rhino in this hardcore match. It would be a lot more fun. I just the weapons in this game, you know, I try and you know experiment a little bit. I I don't even know what that is. Like a jar of pickles or it's like a I wouldn't say a watermelon, but I don't know what that is. It can't be a cucumber because Undertaker would never allow that backstage. But, like, it's just. Like, the weapons, they just don't have that same impact as they do in later games. And a lot of people say, well, that's kind of how the weapons were. People got hit in the head and just got it back up, back to like it was nothing. <laughs> and he just threw Earl Hebner out of the way. What a guy. Oh, oh he got hit anyway. Yeah, see, even <laughs> Earl Hebner's just kind of. He's a little dazed at the. At worst. It's just a stinger. Walk it off. I think in uh, last game, it's kind of funny because Crash Howie is one of those guys where it's always synonymous with me. You know, he's like the, the hardcore title guy. Obviously, he made the 24-7 rule. And, well, I guess in No Mercy, you know, he's the default champion. But Steve Blackman in SmackDown 2 was the hardcore champion by default. And he actually held it for a while. It was actually a, a pretty entertaining reign, in my opinion. I know most people have forgotten about it. Most people don't even really care about it. Uh, so you never hear anybody talk about, you know, his reign. And everybody talks about how boring it was. I thought it was just funny as hell. You know, he'd beat, like, six guys up backstage with no issues. <laughs> while El Snow was talking to him. And, you know, he was kind of like the 24-7 rule. I'm sure at house shows it was still a thing. But, um, like on TV, it was pretty much it ended with uh, Steve Blackman for the most part. Until he lost the title again. But I actually really enjoyed that run. Whereas Crash, it was like, okay, he'd lose it like three times. And, you know, the same night and be like, okay... He gets it back every time, except for WrestleMania 2000 when they messed up. But with C. Blackman, it was just, no. He, he'd take on, like, two guys at a time, you know, Tess and Albert or something along those lines. And, you know, he didn't lose it. He was a pretty... It's too bad people forget about it. But, I mean, honestly, I enjoyed it. But I, clearly people don't really talk about it, so they must not have enjoyed it that much either. But this is closing the match here. Give him a choke slam. Gonna go for the one, two, three. And that's how you unlock Rhino in this game. As you can see, you know, you get a funny little, well, I wouldn't say funny, but a cool little cutscene after the fact. All right, everybody, but that's gonna do it for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Like, comment, and subscribe for more daily content. And make sure to hit the notification bell to be updated on that daily content. Make sure you tune in next week for more Just Bring It content.